Hello, hello. This is your host, Marhai Peterson, and this is the Former Au Pair Travel Podcast. This podcast is all about working as an au pair in a foreign country in order to see the world. I offer tips and tricks to help you avoid common mistakes and set yourself up for success as an au pair, and most importantly, how to travel a crap ton on a low budget while you're at it. Today's podcast episode is going to be all about how to figure out if being an au pair is right for you. So I'm going to go through my own experience and share kind of what to expect, some of the qualifications that you need, and what's really great about it and what's not so great about it. So if you're just thinking about being an au pair, this is the perfect episode for you to find out all the information you will need to know. I think most people who have sought out this podcast are probably already aware of what an au pair is. But for anyone who's not, an au pair is a person from overseas who lives with and works for a host family commonly helping with childcare and house duties, and usually for a small stipend each month. So is being an au pair right for you? The number one question that you want to ask yourself before even beginning the process at all is do you like kids? And I know this seems obvious because you're going to be working with them, but not only are you going to be working with them, you're going to be living with them. So you are actually going to be with these kids all the time. And even on your off hours or your off days, you're still going to be with the kids. And assuming that they like you, which hopefully they do, they're going to be knocking on your door and trying to play with you all the time. So you have to like kids. You also are going to need experience with kids. Surprise, surprise. I know it's crazy that they would actually want you to have experience to watch their kids. But yeah, don't skip this. Don't lie about your references. Don't do any of that because... When it all comes down to it, like the safety of these kids is in your hands and it can actually be a difficult job, you know, and the only way that you can really prepare yourself for what's to come is through having actual experience working with kids and then you have a better idea and still things are going to surprise you. You're going to encounter stuff you never thought possible, (laughs) but at least you have the base experience to back you up. I already talked a little bit about how There can be complications of living with the kids that you work for. But not only that, there's complications of living with basically your employers. Like the family that you work for, they are your employers. And there's going to be some uncomfortableness about that. And it's going to feel a little bit icky sometimes that you can't ever get away from them. There's also going to be amazing times where it's awesome. But yeah, there's going to be times where it's not so awesome and that you would love to get away And there's going to be conflict, there's going to be miscommunications, um, culture differences, and expectations that are not filled somehow. It happens. Even with the greatest families in the world, it happens. And I went through three families, which is kind of a story for another day, but just to briefly get into that, the first family that I chose was the best family ever, like absolute best family ever, and... I was only with them for three months because it wasn't actually my official family. It was an English tutoring thing so that I could get my visa before I actually started as being an au pair. So that's one thing I'll talk a little bit more about. But anyways, this was my first family, which I said was incredible. I loved this family. I got along with them so well. I hung out with the parents all the time. The kids were freaking adorable. I was obsessed with them. And even we still had conflicts. It's like with your friends, with your With your own family, there's always going to be conflict, and especially culture differences. When I first got to that family, which was so sweet, I loved them, they made me feel so welcome, but when I first got there, I tried walking around the house without any shoes on, and oh my gosh, I've never felt so judged in my entire life. I got the dirtiest looks, and then they just straight up told me to go put shoes on and that it was gross. So that's when I learned my lesson that you wear house shoes in Germany. And even though that was uncomfortable, since I didn't know the family very well yet, I learned my lesson. I never, ever, ever, ever was caught without house shoes or slippers on in a German family's house ever again. And now, I actually wear them all the time anyways, so it kind of translated over for me too, even coming home. But being comfortable with conflict and being really open in communication, those are two things that are so crucial in order for it to be a success with the family. Also, communication and getting everything up front before even choosing the family is so important. And I got lucky with my first family just because 
honestly, I didn't ask them a whole lot. I asked them a few things, but I didn't really get into all the nitty gritty stuff that I wanted to know or that I expected. And I kind of just hoped for the best because I wanted to make sure that I got a family. I thought it was like a scarce thing that I might not get a family if I didn't pick quickly, which is not true. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But my second family, I did the same thing. I asked them a couple things. I knew a little bit about the family, but I didn't really get into it. And that turned out to be a huge mistake. So like one of the first things, I'm not going to say this is too much on me because I don't know how I could have known to ask for this. But you can know now because if it's important to you, you'll know that this is a thing. So maybe ask for it. But this family didn't believe in Wi-Fi. They actually thought that it was like unhealthy, which who knows, maybe it is, maybe they'll be right. But for me, that didn't really work out because I'm not on my phone all the time, but I need to. I needed to be on it a decent amount, especially to contact friends and family from home. And um, especially there, I had a different SIM card and you really use internet for everything. So for your phone calls, obviously for roaming, you need internet, which means I needed Wi-Fi when I was home because the internet's really, or the cellular data is really expensive. So Wi-Fi was something that was really important for me, which is going to be for you too, most likely wherever you go, if you want to contact your family and friends. I had to go to a cafe or a library every single day to actually call my family or text people or go online, whatever I needed to do. So that was really unfortunate. Another thing that was unfortunate was the fact that it was important to me to be able to speak German with the kids so that I could learn German as well as teaching them English. Because a big reason why you're there is to teach them English, but also a huge part of the au pair program or the au pair idea is the fact that it's kind of a give and take situation where you're teaching English, but you're also learning the language from the kids. Because it's great to learn a foreign language from kids. They are awesome teachers. So that was also important to me, and that was something I had with my first family. So I just sort of expected it, which, total mistake, um, was not allowed to do that with the, this next family. The dad came in, walked in on me talking to the girls, or reading the girls a German book on like, I think the second day I was there or something, and he started yelling at me. He was like, you only speak German in this house, or sorry, <laughs> you will only speak English in this house. There will be no German, blah, blah, blah. You can't do that. We wouldn't have hired you if like we wanted you to speak German to our kids. This is ridiculous. And I was like, okay, well, I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to speak German or to learn German. Like That's kind of the reason why I'm here. So it was a miscommunication. It was something that should have been addressed before even starting and there was a lot of things like that that could have been avoided I would have never picked that family ever if I had asked just even a few things so make sure to think those things out what you really want from the situation and make it clear because if the family says no that's not okay perfect say all right thank you anyways for the opportunity moving on or find another one That was an introduction to the former Au Pair Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Mariah Peterson. Thanks for listening.